The assault rifles are one of, if not the most, widely used category of weaponry in Battlefield 5. And while they have historically been some of the best weapons available in the game, especially for those who don't want to confine themselves to a specific engagement distance or playstyle, these 6.2 changes largely made things a little bit more difficult. So, in today's assault rifle guide, we're going to be going over each of the individual assault rifles available, their stats and specializations, how they compare to each other and other relevant competition, and of course, which are best suited for what kind of engagement distance. Timestamps to the individual weapons can be found down below in the description if you're interested in a specific weapon only, and the graphs we'll be using here are provided by KHT120 in his updated Reddit post on vertical recoil adjusted time to kill in update 6.2. Link to that of course will also be down below in the description. Before we jump into talking about individual rifles though, an important but brief note on assault rifles in general with the current weapon balance in mind. With update 6.2, a lot of weapons saw their stats return to what they largely were previous to the 5.2 and 6.0 update and the accompanying weapon balance and time to kill fiasco that of course ensued following those updates. The automatics, assault rifles of course included however, weren't so lucky and thus in general there are of course exceptions, most notably in the case of the Breda PG, assault rifles are less effective at medium and long range and require an additional bullet to kill from 30 meters onwards. This means they are at a clear disadvantage at medium ranges to the assault semi-autos, but also many of the scouts SLRs and are in more direct competition with the medic SMGs in sub 30 meters combat. The consequence of all this really is reduced competitiveness of many of the weapons we're about to discuss, but fear not, if you enjoy using ARs while no longer amongst the best weapons in the game, they aren't unviable choices, but simply put you at a minor disadvantage in most situations. But starting in order of close quarter viability, we have the M1907 SF, firing at an extremely fast 770 rounds per minute, paired with a high but surprisingly manageable recoil pattern, slightly reduced magazine capacity of 21 rounds, and a specialization tree with plentiful in terms of close quarter options. This, for all intent and purposes, is the most viable AR alongside the Breda PG currently in the game. It specializes in close to medium range engagements instead of largely entirely medium range as many of the other ARs do, and thus isn't hit anywhere near as hard by the nerfs we saw with the 6.2 update. This thing shredded back in the days of 5.0 and frankly still does now. In terms of your specialization options, you really have two ways to go about things. If you're focused on close quarter combat or just very competent at controlling vertical recoil, you can genuinely go for the hip fire upgrades, that is enhanced grips and polished action on the left hand side of the specialization tree. Instead of that, or alternatively, you have the recoil buffer, which reduces your vertical recoil by 20% on the right hand side. The gameplay you're seeing here today, by the way, was shot with such a close quarter hipfire focused loadout alongside the quick aim and lighten stock upgrades that I would also recommend for this weapon. In terms of the comparative, the M1907 can genuinely out damage pretty much all ARs and most SMGs at anything sub 50 meters, which in the case of the ARs is where their current effective engagement distance truly ends. It really already becomes more difficult at 30 meters and onwards. In close quarter, you are at a disadvantage against SMGs in terms of hip fire, and if their fire rates exceed around about the 720 round per minute mark, you'll also be at a disadvantage in terms of pure damage output. But at the cost of a reduced magazine, you do have a weapon that is actually capable of doing decently beyond just the say 20 meter mark, which is not something you can say for many of the faster firing SMGs that may be out damaging you in extreme close quarters. Now, you are going to have to rein in the vertical recoil, thus for someone who isn't willing to do that or isn't willing to burst fire the weapon, things could get a little bit tricky, so probably then not the best gun for you. A quick note in between by the way, if you enjoy these weapon guides, I'm currently working on updated videos for most if not all of the individual weapon classes, so subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss those coming out in the near future. Next up though, we have the trickiest of the assault rifles to use, the Breda PG. Now I talked in length about this weapon in my recent underrated and unique weapons video, link to that in the description and info card if you're interested, so I'll try to cover it here relatively briefly. The Breda is a burst fire AR, which means specifically it fires a 4 round burst which sub 30 meters is actually capable of taking out a target with those 4 bullets it fires. After that, 5 bullets are required and thus a second burst is going to be needed to down a normal health infantry player. 
being a burst fire weapon, of course, makes it, frankly, quite tricky to use. And the specializations reflect that as well. If you go down the left-hand side and elect to go for the light bolt specialization, you'll increase the rate of fire of the burst itself, but not decrease the time between being able to fire bursts. This is generally only recommended for players with very high accuracy and playing mostly under 30 meters, where a single burst, of course, is sufficient to take out a target. If you're a mere mortal, then frankly, you're likely going to want to stick with the right hand side and elect the trigger drop specialization, which doesn't actually increase the rate of fire of individual bursts, but instead just eliminates the small break or pause between the bursts, giving you a weapon that can essentially fire like an automatic. Also to note about the Breda is its semi-auto mode, which thanks to its comparative to most semi-autos, very high fire rate paired with excellent long range damage model is comparable to the likes of the M1A1 carbine in terms of damage output. So highly effective and significantly easier to use than the weapon's burst fire mode, of course. As said, there's quite a bit more complexity surrounding this weapon, but we'll leave it here at that for this video. In terms of comparative damage though, as this weapon only ever drops off to a 5 shot kill and not 6 or 7 bullet to kill, like most other assault rifles, the longer range the engagement is, the larger the advantage it has over competing assault rifles. You are going to have to rein in the decently noticeable vertical recoil to make that happen however, but the weapon's performance is still excellent at everything but let's say sub 10 meters against most of the automatics. So a tricky but truly rewarding weapon to use, for which a good deal of practice will actually pay off. Then we have the M2 Carbine, a very effective and genuinely relatively easy to use all-rounder with a few unique aspects about it which help distinguish it from the competition. It fires at 830 rounds per minute, but with a reduced damage model, meaning it requires an additional bullet to kill compared to most other ARs. Thus, between 0 and 10 meters, you're looking at a 5 shot kill instead of a 4 shot kill, between 10 and 30, a 6 instead of 5 shot kill, between 30 and 50, a 7 instead of 6 bullet to kill, and of course, from 50 meters onwards, a 8 instead of 7 bullet to kill. Recall is comparable to that of the STG on a per shot level, though vertical is slightly reduced and in terms of horizontal there is a heavy right side bias, meaning the weapon will generally pull more into that direction than others, allowing for a little bit of compensation on the user's part. Specializations here aren't really as impactful as on some other weapons. You can go for the left side focus build, going for hip fire upgrades for better close quarter performance, or you can stick to the right hand side for reduced horizontal recoil, making the weapon even more medium range competitive. And I do say medium range competitive with a good reason for while the high fire rate may lead you to believe that this weapon was intended, say much like the M1907 SF for close quarter usage, thanks to the lower recoil model, really it's medium range where this weapon performs best. It absolutely, and I have said this before, directly competes with the STG44 and generally beats it out quite well, especially sub 30 meters. It somewhat performs like a mixture of the Sturmgewehr 1.5 at distances under 30 meters and more or less like an STG44 at distances above 30 meters in terms of its damage output, all the while of course firing significantly faster, but with reduced damage on a per bullet basis. Speaking though of the Sturmgewehr 1.5, amongst the assault rifles, it is probably the last one you could classify as close quarter competent. Its 670 round per minute fire rate comes with a decent 31 round mag, but quite a bit of recoil, both in vertical and in the horizontal department. It's this recoil that ultimately is quite problematic for the weapon, as it's out damaged by the likes of the M1907 SF, for example, at pretty much all relevant ranges. Because that weapon actually has frankly, lower horizontal recoil on a per shot basis. Now, you do have a larger magazine, of course, but then why not go for the M2 carbine that performs as well as the SG-15 in close quarters, but better from 30 meters onward. That aside, though, the specialization recommendations probably won't be a surprise here. You have substantial horizontal and vertical recoil, and you aren't really competitive with close quarter focused SMGs in sub 10 or sub 20 meter engagements. So you're going to have to get that recoil down to perform better at medium ranges. And that means electing to go with the ported barrel and recoil buffer as well if you're struggling with controlling the vertical recoil. Then, of course, we have the STG-44. Now, we have already talked about this weapon here in length today as we've compared at least half of the ARs to it for reference purposes. That is kind of illustrative of the weapon's popularity and widespread use, and previous to this update for good reason, in my opinion. 
Either way though, the STG comes with a solid 599 round per minute fire rate and a standard 31 round magazine as well as mediocre levels of recoil. In terms of specializations, I generally would recommend going for the ported barrel as that is going to reduce the amount of horizontal recoil you're dealing with and increase your ranged effectiveness with it. But in terms of the recoil buffer, giving you a reduction to vertical recoil, I would argue that depending on your recoil controlling skills and the kind of engagements you're most frequently coming up against, that is more close medium or more medium long ranges, you can choose to elect to go for that or for an alternative specialization choice. While all of today's footage was in fact shot with a left hand side build, that is quick aim followed by enhanced grip, light and stock and custom stock, I can tell you the weapon is a lot more enjoyable with a ported barrel. As we have mentioned when talking about the M2 Carbine, for comparative purposes the STG44 is largely inferior to it. But the differences are not huge here and thus the STG44 is not a bad weapon by any stretch of the imagination and equipped with a 3x scope it has the added advantage of being quite decent in a semi-automatic mode. Though of course nowhere near as good as the Breda PG but that is an advantage it would hold over something like the M2 Carbine which with its increased bullets kill generally just simply won't be suited for those kinds of playstyles. Now last but not least we have the Ribeirol with a more conservative fire rate of 539 rounds per minute and a slightly reduced magazine capacity at 25 rounds. It compensates for its low damage output with very low recoil, specifically and most importantly horizontal recoil which makes it easily the most accurate of the ARs available in Battlefield 5. Now, because of that accuracy, there isn't much in terms of specialization choices that are of absolute importance. There's no must-have recoil reducing specialization here, so I generally just go with the usual quick aim, followed by faster reload and better hip fire to improve my survivability chances in close quarter fights, where I'm frankly at a damage disadvantage in terms of raw TTK. Now, in terms of the assault rifles, Sure, it's the best for true medium long range engagements, it's the most accurate. The problem with that of course is that the weapon is hopelessly outgunned at that point by the semi-autos and SLRs, so in my personal opinion where the Uribe shines best is not in a misguided attempt to try and get kills beyond 50 meters against other AR users, but at a more medium range where the extremely low recoil, especially horizontal, will allow you to go for more headshots. More headshots means less bullets to kill and a better time to kill. I'd focus on medium range for that strat as close quarters is just a little bit too chaotic and recoil isn't much of a hindrance in those situations even when you're trying to go for headshots but when trying to take out prone targets or people behind good cover I often find myself struggling with many of the ARs because of the amount of recoil I'm having to deal with. The Ribeirol doesn't really have that problem of course and therefore do give it a try if you haven't already. It is situationally and in the right hands a surprisingly viable weapon. But that pretty much wraps it up for the assault rifles in Battlefield 5. I'll be doing more of these guides in the near future. If you enjoyed the video rating would be much appreciated but with all that being said I'd like to thank you very much for watching and hope to see you in the next Battlefield 5 video.